Hello, and in today's demo, we're going to manage Windows servers using Ansible. So we're going to set up a Windows 2016 server so that Ansible can manage it over HTTPS. We're going to set up CentOS, my CentOS 8 server so that it can manage Windows using WinRM. We're going to create an inventory file. We're going to prove we can get a connection with WinPing. Then we're going to create a basic playbook. Um, we're going to do some stuff like files, directories, and checksums, and then we're going to use Ansible Vault to hide the password in the inventory file. That's the very important last step for security. So these are my credentials today at the bottom of the screen. This, it, the server will be destroyed afterwards, so they're just junk at the moment. Okay, so the first step is to set up the Windows server. So the first thing you can do is go to the Windows setup guide on Ansible Docs, and it has a whole lot of really useful information in here on how to do it, and this is what we're going to follow today. Now, Windows 2016, yeah, so make your way to the WinRM setup section, Win and all these links, every link I have will be included in the comments at the bottom um, in the YouTube video. So start up a PowerShell session, and before we can actually run it, we need to set the protocol for TLS 1.2. So by default in 2016, it's TLS 1, and yet that won't let us connect to the remote website, so we just need to update that before we can run the PowerShell commands. So simply run that. Again, I'll paste all this in to the YouTube video comments and this, the, the section underneath the video. So now we can just take those commands, run them in PowerShell, obviously administrator access, and then that will be done. And then we're just going to do a double check to make sure it's actually listening properly. And we can see that we have both there. So we're going to use HTTPS. Okay. So the next step is to set up our inventory file. So I won't call it inventory. I'll call it um, I'll call it host.ini, which is more of the standard convention. Okay. So I've already got one that's pre-prepared. So I'll copy that in. And as you can see, it's got like a lot of extra stuff there in the variable section including the password now we're going to leave that in for now but in a bit in a short time we're going to take that out and i'll show you how to use ansible vault to hide that password so that it's not not visible okay so now we've got our inventory file let's create our first playbook in fact let's try and do the win ping first and then that just proves before we begin that we've got connectivity Ah, okay, so this is normal. I haven't set my server up for WinRM yet, so we now need to go to the next URL, which is the remote Windows Windows Remote Management. And as you scroll down, you can see there's a command there, the pip install. Now, because I'm on CentOS 8, I need to use pip3, and I'm going to do it as my local user. So I'm going to make a few changes to this command, but I'll make sure this is available in the comments. So pip3, and then hyphen hyphen user. Okay, so that installs it and sets it up. So now if we try WinPing again, we should get a Pong. And we do. Excellent. Right. So now we've got connectivity. We can start by writing our playbook and carry on. So let's go. Okay, so my playbook is just going to be called windows.yaml. Now this is all obviously a very basic steps. You can create roles and collections and all sorts, but I'm just doing going to do a very basic um, template and a playbook that just show you how to use it now that you've got connectivity. So we should always set it up the same, we give it a name, we tell it which host we're going to run on, and that host is the, the group name in the inventory file, which is win. And we're going to use that again later on when we set up some variables. So I'm going to set up, I'm going to use the win file module. So I'll just pop that up here. Standard module, every module for Windows generally starts win underscore something. So we're going to create a directory, we're going to cut and paste it straight out. I'm going to make a couple of adjustments and then we're going to um, run that and make sure it gets created so we actually can see Ansible doing things on Windows. And you'll see just how simple it is. Okay, so save that. Let's run it. So it's like a different command now. We're going to use Ansible-playbook. And then we're going to reference the host file and our, play and our playbook, windows.yaml. That's running. This is good. And let's go over to the server and see if it's created that directory. Okay, so I want to go to the C drive and 
temp, which wasn't there, but is there, and then folder, which wasn't there and is there. Brilliant. So we know it's worked. So let's go back. Now let's add a, let's just touch a file. Let's just create a temporary file. Well, touch a, a foo.txt file into that directory. Okay, just literally, we're going to just cut it in, adjust it, its position. That's it, because it never comes in, in in the right in the right spacing. Okay, I just change this to be the folder directory as well. Yeah, foo.txt we want. Okay, so now let's run that and see if it creates the file for us. Looks like it worked, so let's go and have another look. Get that back, and we can see the file there. Now it's an empty file, but it's created it, and it's foo.txt, that's what we asked it to do. Okay, now let's create a little template and push that to foo.txt on the Windows server. So foo.txt.j2 for Ginger2, and Ginger2 means that we can expand Ansible facts and variables into it. So I'll just cut this in. It's just a silly message that has that refers to the Ansible host name. And the Ansible host name is taken from the facts gathered by Ansible when it runs on the server. So that Ansible host name will be replaced by the host name of the server. So let's update the playbook to cater for the Ginger2 template. Okay, so we actually there is a, a win template module. So if you scroll down, uh, you get a good good couple of examples there that you can use. So I've already got one prepared, so I'm just going to cut and paste that in from my notes. But it's almost identical. Okay, now let's run that. So this time, our empty file will become. A template file and it'll be full of that it'll be have that messaging that we just added into the into the template file and you'll see it'll expand the variable into the actual host name so refresh and then open that and there we go so we've actually got that should have been called not caller <laughs> but we can see the server name there so we know it's picking up variables from the local server which is great Okay, now I'm just going to add a couple more in. We're going to do a check sum of that file and then just get a number back so we can compare it, make sure it hasn't been tampered with. And then we're going to do a Windows update for some security updates. So I'm just going to cut and paste them off my notes, pop them straight in. You know, feel free to pause the video and write all this stuff out. There it is. So Winstat is just going to look at that file and do a check sum on it. And then we register the check sum and then the, var the debug variable outputs that checksum value so that we can see what it is to the screen when we run Ansible. And then we're going to use Windows updates and we're going to do security updates. But it's a new server, only built it a few minutes ago, so chances are there won't be any. Alright, we got the checksum out, that's good. So if we were checking a particular checksum, just to prove that a file was the one we wanted, we could then check that against something else. Um, we don't, we're not going to do that in this case, but it's good to know you can. And the security updates, yeah, it's, it's green, okay, so it didn't actually do anything. I wasn't expecting it to. Okay, now the next section, we need to cover security. If we look in the host or any file, we can see that the password is in plain text, and that's generally not a good idea under any circumstances. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create um, a default variable location called group underscore vars, and then I'll just quickly create the win.yaml file and then just save it. And the win.yaml is, is, is a direct reference to the group name in the host or any file. So you can see the win.yaml win and if we cap the host file, you can see that win is the name of the group. So any any variables in win.yaml will be picked up when Ansible runs. So it's, if you know that, it's really it's very handy. So 
what we need to do now is encrypt our string. Now the string is the password from the host.ini file and the name is going to be ansible underscore password and it's going to output in a particular format and we take that format straight out and cut it straight into a variable into the win.yaml file. So we have to give it a full password. In this case I'm going to give it password123. Right, so take that output and we're going to put it straight into the win.yaml file. It and save that. I'll quickly, yep, I'll have another link in the in the um, description. Um, there is like an inventory. Actually, let's just put it up. There we go. So I'll put this link in. This gives you some hints and tips on how to do how to hide secret values and what you can do to pick them up. So I'll leave that in there as well for you to have a look at. Um, so now we can rerun it. And we have to add in ask vault pass at the end. Oh, not vaulty, vault pass. There we go. And then we give it the pass password or password123, which is what we use to encrypt the file. And that's running. So we know that we've got the password right. It's picked up the Ansible password variable and it's now running. That's good. Right, I'll cancel that. And what I'll do is we'll create a vault file. Yeah, so oh actually yeah, I didn't forgot to delete it. Let's delete it out of there. Now we can run the vault file. Well we'll run it again. And once this is finished, we'll create a vault file that takes it away. So it's still working, just to make sure that it wasn't actually the password in the host file. Yeah, that's okay. Right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to create an open vault.txt file. We're going to put the password in here, and then we're going to reference this password in the Ansible CFG file, so that we don't have to type it in every time. So again, don't ever keep this file in the same place that you put your code, because if you put your code in GitHub, it means you're going to have a plain text password that's visible to anybody that's got access to your GitHub repo. Make sure you don't do that. So we use vault underscore password underscore file, and the file was open vault.txt. And then we take that off the command and we can kick it off. And then that'll just pick up the file. Uh, out the variable and just carry on working as normal. So we're now managing our Windows servers with Ansible. Um, if you've enjoyed this session, get in touch, uh, let me know what else you want to see, subscribe, and have a great time. Thank you very much.